let's talk about artificial neural networks which are another machine learning approach to classification artificial neural networks are a set of techniques that were loosely inspired by the human nervous system emphasis on word loosely we say word because in the 1950s when these techniques were first proposed that's what the inspiration was but today these techniques look very much like the other statistical techniques that we have covered so the modern implementations are very different and not really inspired by any human nervous system we say loosely because the comparison with the human nervous system tends to evoke a kind of self aware really human kind of computer which is not really the case in fact it has very little to do with any of these techniques so what really are artificial neural networks artificial neural networks are analogous to support vector machines and other similar types of learning techniques in fact the first and prototypical example of an artificial neural network is the perceptron which like the support vector machine is a binary classifier but in fact it's less sophisticated than a support vector machines implementation due to this history artificial networks have had a hard time living up to all the hype but nowadays they are finding some applications in problems like handwriting analysis and computer vision let's learn about the perceptron as we just said a perceptron is a prototypical example of an artificial neural network now a perceptron is conceptually very similar and related to the support vector machines classification approach which is something that we've already spent some time on let's remind ourselves of what is involved in a support vector machines approach a support vector machine is used to build binary classifiers so given a set of points the support vector machine would separate those points into two categories or classify them into two categories so it works really well with a problem like spam detection where you want to separate emails into spam or ham the key thing here is the word binary let's see how a support vector machine can be represented visually Let's take our email det spam detection problem again. You have a bunch of emails that are already marked as spam and ham. Take these points and represent them in an n-dimensional space. Let's call this our feature space. What the support vector machine does is it finds a hybrid plane that neatly separates the two categories. spam and ham this is the linear function that it tries to find so the support vector machine finds a hyperplane that cuts between the two clusters of points and separates them into categories now since we're looking at the three dimensional diagram here a plane represents things nicely but in n dimensional space 
what we would use is an n minus one dimensional hyperplane. This hyperplane can then be used to separate any new problem instance that comes in. So any new email that comes in can be classified into one of the categories. Now this hyperplane neatly separates spam and ham. Everything on one side of the plane is spam and everything on the other side is ham. Now this hyperplane then acts as a boundary. So any new problem instance that comes in, if it's on the spam side of the hyperplane, it will be called spam. And if it's on the ham side of the hyperplane, it will be called ham. You might be wondering, we've had been talking about perceptrons, but we spent a lot of time now talking about support vector machines. Everything that we said about support vector machines could also be applied to perceptrons. Perceptrons, as we said, are analogous to support vector machines. It is a specific algorithm to determine some hyperplane that separates the data of these two categories. Just like support vector machines, this specific algorithm looks for a way to separate the two clusters of points, but it doesn't really care which hyperplane it uses to separate these points. It just wants any hyperplane which could potentially separate the points. On the other hand, the support vector machine, as we discussed, finds the best such hyperplane, which is the maximum margin hyperplane. So the support vector machine finds the best hyperplane that can divide the two categories of points, while the perceptron will simply attempt to find one such hyperplane that could separate the points, not necessarily the best hyperplane. A perceptron is said to use online learning. This is a specific term used in machine learning to denote techniques which consume one data point at a time. So in these techniques, the training data is taken one data point at a time, some step is performed, and then the next point in the training data is consumed. Here's a visual representation of how a perceptron would work. It starts with two data points. It takes these two points. It figures out a plane, any hyperplane, which separates these two points. So perceptron would just find any hyperplane that separates these two data points, not necessarily the one that cuts right through the middle. Now let's say a new data point comes in. So this is the next point from the training data set. The perceptron just moves the hyperplane accordingly. Now it picks the hyperplane that would separate these sets of points cleanly. Now the plane is moved in a way such that a measure or quantity called the iteration error is minimized. We'll not go into the mechanics of what the iteration error is and how it actually does this.
So here's the new hyperplane for this set of points. Now yet another data point comes in. The perceptron again moves the hyperplane so that we can still get a clean separation between the two categories of points. It will keep doing this as it moves through the training data set. As more and more points are added, it keeps moving the hyperplane, just keeping these two clusters of points separated. The perceptron will converge to a particular hyperplane. So it will converge to a solution in a finite number of steps. But this is possible only if the data is linear separ linearly separable. 